but we need the ventilators. Massive need for ventilators. Greatest critical need are ventilators. The COVID-19 pandemic has put ventilators across the U.S. in short supply. Here's why they're so important and why not having enough could endanger lives. Ventilators are machines that bring oxygen into the lungs. They are used on people who have difficulty breathing or can no longer breathe on their own. They're often used for short periods of time, like during surgery when a patient is under general anesthesia or while getting treatment for lung impairment. In some cases, individuals use ventilators for long periods of time and even for life. Those who are completely dependent on ventilators could die within minutes of being taken off of them. Ventilators blow air into the body's airways so that the air can make its way to the lungs. One end of the tube is inserted into the windpipe and the other end is attached to the ventilator. To get the tube into the windpipe, doctors will perform an intubation. Ventilators are needed for the most severe of COVID-19 cases. Going into the pandemic, the U.S. had about 160,000 ventilators with an additional 16,600 in the national stockpile. The CDC estimates that 2.4 to 21 million will require hospitalization due to COVID-19, and the number of patients needing ventilators could range between 1.4 and 31 patients per ventilator. Some patients will require ventilators for a few days, others for several weeks, creating an even tougher supply demand dilemma. Companies across the country are stepping in to fill the void in supply, and President Trump invoked wartime powers to increase the supply of ventilators. Some hospitals have even begun using one ventilator for two COVID-19 patients. But even with more ventilators, the country also faces a shortage of respiratory therapists, the trained staff who operates the ventilators. To fill the gap, some respiratory therapists are volunteering to relocate to hotspots, and states have been recruiting retired respiratory therapists and student trainees. We're expected to see the outbreak peak uh, April 15th, according to a model by the University of Washington that the government's following. But that same model um, also projects that we'll need 32,000 ventilators at that point. And we know from GM, they're only going to deliver about 6,000 by June 1st. So that's, first of all, that's well past the point when we're gonna have this expected need. And on top of that, you know, just to even put that in context, the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, has said he'll need, he's estimated he'll need about 30,000 ventilators. Some of these companies are happy to ramp up production. Some of them are have been forthright about when they're gonna be able to um, bring some of these ventilators online. We've seen some states like Oregon and California starting to redeploy ventilators that they don't believe they will need at the moment. Um, so that's been helpful as well. Oregon redeployed 140 to New York, and we know that California is um, doing the same. So it's sort of like a whack-a-mole situation where the government says they're ready, you know, with this stockpile of 10,000, um, but they don't really acknowledge that's not enough to address, um, you know, what we're projected to need uh, once this, this outbreak sort of peaks. The one thing we do know is that the federal government is doing to try and prioritize where some of these ventilators are going is the White House um, task force has asked each state to provide daily utilization rates for the ventilators to try and get a better scope of where the shortages are and where these hot spots are that they need to be deploying as many ventilators as possible once we start to see these orders come in from some of these companies. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news.